Hello, welcome to this episode of Unloaded, brought to you by Via Play. It's new. Do you like the new graphic? Let's see it. I, saw my- I like the new ad. Yeah, you're just about to say that, John. Were you? I was. Something's I was going to say I didn't changed. get in right for that. Something's changed. Yeah, well, main dogs. Money maker, wasn't it? Part time model. Um, anyway, welcome to this episode for our, of Unloaded. I'm with my two best rugby mates, um, John Barkley and Stephen Ferris. Welcome, welcome, lads. No guests today because it's the end of a seven block um, run of games. And if the players aren't in, in on international duty, they'll be in Dubai. And probably the coaches will also be away or maybe glamping like. Mike Blair, he's gone, he's gone glamping, isn't he, for a week? He spoke to us at the weekend. So it's just us three today. It's just us three. How are you, lads? Stevie, I noticed you had a Ireland shirt on earlier. You've taken it off? Oh, I took it off, yeah. Brought it back home with me. I think I'll give it to the old man. It's a lovely jersey, heritage jersey, kind of a bit retro, really nice, really, really nice. Is that um, what they're wearing in the new Ooh. No, they're not wearing that. They're wearing a jersey called the alternate jersey, which is like, the like a, a bluey color with like stripes in it. And then, of course, mm. there's controversy this weekend. You might have read it on the news feeds about South Africa playing in green and Ireland playing this new alternate jersey, which is greeny blue. So it could make for a bit of a, um, a nightmare. Is that for people Saturday that are colorblind? Gentlemen, is that for people yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, well, the World Rugby have approved it. So that's yep. what they were saying today when I was down at that launch. Um, but yeah, the Heritage jersey's class, really nice jersey. So it's on Elvery's sports stores. Get it online. And there you go. Mm, good sell, mate. Uh, John, how have you been, mate? How's half term treating you at home? I'm out of it, mate. Uh, no, good, mate. Good. Um, busy weekend. Busy weekend. Yes. Busy. Very busy. Oh. Yeah, very busy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you buying yourself? New car? I treated myself to I turned, few, no, I turned on a few extra lights in the house this week as a treat just for the kids. So we've got heating heat and everything on earlier. Gone. Oh, nice. Where were you? Where were you on the weekend? I was in uh, Glasgow, which isn't far away. And then I did the Scotland game. And then I did, and I was with you in Cardiff. So busy mm-hmm. weekend, mate. Busy, tiring. Airports are horrible. I hate them. But Bit of cool. At Scotland, there's not a huge amount up here, sadly, but there was a little bit. I saw Kelly Brown with his guitar. Does he do that every single time? Is that every like his, is his? Is that his niche? Oh, the worst thing is if, if people haven't seen it, they just absolutely love it. And if you've seen it once, you've seen it a thousand times. And he's the it's, it's ridiculous. Sweet Caroline, is it Sweet, Sweet Caroline? Caroline? He's getting the crowd going. Yeah. Everyone absolutely steaming. You could tell any story, and they could be as bad as they could be, and you'd sing, and everyone thinks he's class. Yeah. Standard. Still, you still got to carry it around with you, don't you? Yeah. Good, we just bring. I think he just borrows them. But the killer bees were back together for a few beers, which is nice. What are the killer bit, bees? Actually, right? I, 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 I had to break up a bit. Had to break up a big fight on Saturday. Peacemaker. Oh yeah. Like coming out the stadium on uh, on Saturday, and this um, this guy was getting attacked by three lads. So I had to break it up. And then the Scottish man of it drove, drove past and helped out. So did my good deed for the weekend. Well done. Do you have to get a bit physical, or I didn't want to get too close to the middle of it. I was like, "Not a face, not a face." But the money maker, the money maker, mate. So uh, I didn't know what to do. Actually, I've never been in that situation. So I was in the middle of it, trying to sort of break up this melee, and then yeah, it's a bit bizarre. Actually, a bit bizarre. But, well, you did a good job. I heard. Anyway, job. anyway so... how was your weekend, Shanks? How was yours? Yeah, all right, all fine. Um, covered a couple of games Saturday and Sunday with you. Um, went out for a couple of soft drinks after the game on Sunday as well, so that was good. Um, we bought the weirdo Gav Muldoon, who was produced yeah. in the show from Via Play, bought him out um, and just kept him on a lead, basically. Otherwise, he'd be locked up. So, But that was all fine, all good. He'll be like a Mr. Tickles character, is he? Yeah, he's a bit like that. You know, you just need one of those extendable leads with Gavin Muldoon. Just to draw him. You can let him go a little bit, but, you know, just not too many people. Don't let him chat to too many people. 
Anyway, the wonder shine so he's, the wonder that he's working on the rugby because hey? he's sort of a big he's big time now. He's working on the football nearly every week, and he pops mm. his head in the studio like yeah. you know a bit of a swagger about him. Then walks out. I'll see you in any text you during the week just to make sure that you're still friends. Yeah, he's, he had, he's changed. Uh, he had an All Saints shirt on as well, so I knew he was out to party. <laughs> It's normally it's normally Blue Harbour, it's normally MS, Burton's, but he had gone big in Cardiff. Three o'clock kickoff, so Wilson Fleece on. Anyway, look, lads, we're digressing. Uh, for those that are watching yes. the show, make sure you get your questions in and we will try and answer them as best we can. We'll start off with our first game of the weekend, which we're going to talk about, and that was Scarlet the Leinster, oh. 35 points to five. It was at Parker Scarlets. I wasn't quite sure how this was going to go because Leinster were missing a lot of players, even though we know their second team is good and their third team is good. Scarlets weren't missing too many. Yeah, they they got a couple of red cards missing, but they still had John Davis to call upon. They still had Johnny McNichol. Um, they, they still had a pretty decent team out, I thought, on paper. But if there's one thing you talk about, lads, when you start a game, it's start big, isn't it? Don't give them anything, nothing. Concentrate. And yeah. it started off <clears throat> probably with the worst way it could. 40 seconds. It was the same as Connor last week, charge down kick. This one... Really good set piece move, really good start of play. Steph Evans, who wouldn't have featured too much in the center, is having to cover at the moment, just gets way out of position there. They do a really good job. They attack him, draw him in, and then they score again pretty quickly after from Rob Russell. That one comes off the head. Came from the kickoff, uh, though, Jags, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Failed to get the kickoff, first line out. Not the easiest skill, but it was quite close until a about 30, 30 ish minutes. And then, I, I, honestly, I, I probably the most depressed I've been watching the Scarlets game for a long time. I just felt like, like I think I think someone said Scar uh, Leinster were missing 12 to Ireland and they had seven, seven guys on the injured list. So they're missing 19 players. Yeah. And Scarlets were just so bad again. And I don't, I don't, I just, we can talk about discipline. We talk about it every week. I think they had another three yellows on the weekend. I just three. Sorry, that's yeah. massive. Three yeah. yellows is huge. Like that, it now brings them to ten yellows and two reds mm -hmm. in the space of seven games. Clearly, that that is a discipline issue. It's not just by luck, is it? It's, it's just because issue. it's also a, a squad. I I just think they're missing. They're not missing guys, but it, it looks like a squad that I don't know how to. That's a great ball. Yeah, and there's the next Sinman, but it, it's just a squad that needs. A shake-up, I think. I think there's a lot of players that are are not playing well enough, obviously, given the results. A lot of players are obviously ill-disciplined. Uh, I, I the person I feel sorry for is Dwayne Peel. And yeah. all the boys there. I just think there's a, a lack of cohesion in what they're doing and at times a lack of effort. If I'm honest, you watch it, there's a lack of intent, lack of intensity in what they're trying to do. And Well, they won one game this season out of the first seven. Long, long old season from here, isn't it? Turnovers have been low. You know, you, you associate the Scars often with being able to turn over the ball quite regularly, and a lot of their tries come from turnovers. But they're really, do really low down the stat list. There, I wonder if Lee Blackett. I wonder what difference he'll make. Sign from Wasps, obviously. Wasps going into administration. Lots of players looking for jobs. Lee Blackett is now signed with Scarlets. So. That might be quite good, and that might help Dwayne Peel. Like a change of voice, someone that's been in a different league with a different view, maybe. But they, they, the problem is they've got, right, is they're defending for such large periods of games, in games, that they're just going to eventually give away too many penalties, and those penalties will lead to yellow cards because they just put themselves under so much pressure all the time. So I think it's actually a good bit of business um, with Scarlet's signing Lee Blackett and I hopefully agree. he can help turn turn it around and maybe, maybe take a little bit of pressure off Dwayne Peel. Oh, when you're in the trenches and he must be feeling it. 
you can imagine Dwayne Peel every week going in and, try, and trying to rally the troops and trying to say something different. But there's only so many ways it can come from the same person. So I think you're right, Shanks. Maybe someone coming in, new voice, a few new ideas might freshen things up. And maybe mm -hmm. some players, you might, you know, there'd be a lot of players off contracts in the papers at the moment from Worcester and Wasp and an opportunity with maybe personal relationships to get guys over for, I wouldn't say on loan. I don't know what the situation would be there. I assume they're all out off contract. So getting people over mm -hmm. for short deals because they, they need something at the moment because the, the current group of players isn't isn't doing it. No. Uh, what do you think, Stevie? Leinster just made to look too good. Didn't have to work too hard. Reese Roddick was good again. No. I thought Leinster were there for the taking. Like, when Scarlet's had the ball, um, I know we were sort of texting a little bit during the game, Shaq. Like, mm. Scarlet's, I think, could have scored a few more tries. Like, and when they went down to 13 men, they sort of played their best rugby, like, weirdly. Um, yeah, and Leinster, yeah, they were just, you know, play what's in front of you, just beat them, get back in the play and see you later, pick up five points. Reese Roddick obviously got man of the match. He was superb. He's a big, big lump of a man. Like, you know, no, he's massive. How much do you reckon he weighs? Massive. 115, maybe, would he? 115 kegs, 18 stone? Yeah, he has to be. Um, mm. Broke off a scrum well at number eight. Yeah, just Leinster didn't have to do too much. A bit like you two lads. Really, really disappointed with the scars. It almost feels like I'm waiting for them to kind of like go, right, okay, start again. Let's put in a good performance. But it's going the other way. It's getting worse and worse mm. and worse and worse week in, week out. So how do you change that? And I think bringing in a fresh voice is, is certainly a starting point. Yeah, I think so. So let's hope the Scots can turn it around um, come the middle part of the season. Uh, we'll move on to another Welsh game. Cardiff versus Edinburgh. Myself and John were there. Um, one of the highlights was an interview we did with Lloyd Williams. And <laughs> John just suddenly appeared and then we didn't I mean, know how Steve, we were Stevie, you were, talking about, you were talking about Gav Muldoon. If ever there's a sign that he's not on the money, is that I'm allowed to walk into the back of an interview and just stand there like an absolute prick. <laughs> he didn't even say anything. He just stood there. He's like, well, he didn't know like, what to do with his hand. In you go. I was like, uh, okay. yeah. and then Shanks, Shanks asked about another 15 questions. So I'm just... <laughs> For <laughs> bad, of course. <laughs> oh, I was a shambles. Oh, I'd someone behind me like this, wind up, wind up. And I was, I was throwing <laughs> questions at John, and then we had to throw back to Ross. And I was like, how am I going to throw back to Ross? Is he doing anything? No, he's throwing the break. I like, like, so anyway, um, uppercut for Gav. Um, but we weren't quite sure. Well, I wasn't quite sure how this game was going to go. I know we said that about the Scarlets, but Edinburgh were missing quite a few players, 14, I think, weren't they? Um, and yeah. Cardiff were missing around five Still had, I thought on paper, Cardiff probably had a stronger team, if I'm honest, John. And it was at home and conditions were good. But um, Christine won BKT URC player of the match. And he was very good, wasn't he, John? He was class. Um, I actually thought it was a really good game. Like real low error count. The second half wasn't as good as the first, but both teams trying to play. And then Edinburgh just... I think clearly at half time said let's go a bit more direct, let's be more physical, and, and they 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 changed the scrum around. It's a great uh, ball mall, ball. They fixed them all, and Scarlet's didn't have uh, Scarlet's Carlet didn't have an answer. So yeah, I, I thought Edinburgh were really good to be fair to them. I think away from home did everything they needed to do. Denied Cardiff a bonus point. Um, yeah, big ticks for me. I think as as far as and we said after the game they've lost a couple couple in a row against the South African team. So. They need to start picking up away wins if they're going to stay in the top half of the table. They didn't play too expansive, which I thought they might do because we sort of seen that's the Edinburgh way. There was a lot of runners off nine, didn't really go wide too often, just started looking for penalties and they did a job. Scrum time, they ended up hammering Cardiff in the, in the second half, which Nearly every scrum they got, apart from the first one, I think, in the second half, ended up being a penalty to Edinburgh, which allowed them to kick the touch, gave them possession, and gave them territory. Um, I thought Goosen came into the game a lot in the second half. There was one moment where Cardiff, for, for about 20 minutes, couldn't get any ball. 
the kick, they missed the kick to touch. And this was a telling part. You know, Cardiff were really throwing the ball around now. It was sort of got to the desperation part with about three minutes to go. They're on the front foot and he nails his man there, gets off, off his feet, off his feet, back to his feet and wins a penalty and just relieves the pressure. And he really came into the game in the second half. And you can't really complain. Edinburgh were the better team. Played the conditions better. It was a little bit windy, wasn't it? But it, do you know what? It's probably nice for Mike Blair and Edinburgh fans to see them win in a different way, I think. Yeah, I agree, James. We're agreeing yeah. here today. I think they would learn a lot more from that game than they learned from spraying the, rock, the ball around against Zebra the previous week. Um, they ground it down. We talked a bit about they got a bit more depth this year. And was that true? I think it looked like it at the weekend. The players they, they picked stepped up. I thought Ben Moncaster was really good again. Hilariously yeah. popped into the interview after the game. Um, we need to get him on the show, don't we? Yeah, really. Yeah, we do actually. He'll definitely come. give him some real difficult topics as well. <laughs> oh, he'd love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He'd love it. So I'm telling you, I thought Charlie Shield played well, kicked well. Yeah, just a good performance. All around, Christine yeah. was class, though. The difference, I, I did I did think and we thought that he was targeting Jared Evans. And you look at it back, they're just going down first phase, second phase, try and find Jared Evans. Um, yeah. First try, good piece of work by Christine. But if you look back, pretty soft, pretty soft tackle. You wonder, is that maybe why he's not involved with Wales, potentially? Not knowing for his physical. Maybe. A little bit. Not, not many tens are good at tackling, though, really, are they? But most of these tens make more of an effort than that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But there have been some terrible defending tens. But he's, he's, not there, he's, not there, he's not there to defend. I, I think more of his kicking than anything. But, yeah, he's he didn't really want to hit Bill Matter, did he? Coming off the base of the scrum. No one did, I don't think. <laughs> no, they didn't. But, anyway, um, Edinburgh, what are they up to fourth, I think, now? was um yeah pretty kind of a pretty big way i'll tell you one thing like cardiff i think four from seven they'll be happy with that if you take like last year where they finished and and what went on i think probably the only the only thing i worry about slightly is the amount of bonus points they've got they've only got one bonus point so far from seven games and that is a little bit of a way when you think like the ospreys have got five scar has got three and these bonus points could come into it and they will come Ed, into Ed, it. Edinburgh got six, mate, as well. Yeah, so I was looking at exactly. Cardiff one more games, but Edinburgh got six every time they've lost. A couple of times yeah. they scored four and lost by less than seven. So, it's yeah. important. You don't, think, you, don't, you, you, don't think, you, you don't think the bonus points are going to matter that much anyway for Cardiff? Are they a realistic top eight team? Well, they're in the top eight at the moment, mate. They're sixth. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the teams behind them have games and smart arse. Only one. <laughs> You don't know, mate. Don't know, but as a league stands, the sixth they'll take that, I think, at the moment, considering where they were. Yeah. Right, let's move on to another Welsh game the Ospreys versus Connor Stevie. Connor end up winners. Looked like at one stage Ospreys were going to run away with it, but the Galway boys game. came back. Good game, I enjoyed it. Um, thought it was really competitive. Connets got off to a bad start, but John Porch, Keel and Blade both played really, really well. Scored a couple of really nice tries. This is what Toby Booth was giving off about Chanks. About post-game. The Connet Connet were offside at the scrum on their own ball. Yeah. Can you explain I've, that one? I've seen that a couple of times recently, Stevie. I know you put it in our in our WhatsApp, and it's very rarely picked up and I'm trying to think. I, I saw it in two games and I've never seen it before. And it's maybe, I know they've brought in, they're trying to look for like the blocking at line outs and a couple of teams are doing it. And it's almost impossible to defend against. If you've got to be back five, you've got a guy running onto the ball. He's already over the game line from, so they're trying to stop that and make it a bit more fair. But you very rarely see it picked up. That's a good play, though. Well, forward pass as well, like, isn't it? Close to being a forward pass from Keelan um, Blade. I don't know. Look, it's not obvious. I've not looked at that initially and thought, wow, that's forward. No, but, me either. I mean, no, me either. Ospreys look like they're, they're back far enough then. They, the, the pass just did it, the pass and pace, and they just get too tight. But, yeah, I mean, 
not the greatest starts from the Ospreys because I had them down at the start of the season to, to finish the highest out of the Welsh teams. Um, still plenty of time left. Uh, there's only played seven games, but one from seven wins, two draws, 13th, five bonus points, which, which is keeping them up. Uh, and, they have, and they have to go to South Africa, Africa next. Yep. They're going to South yep. Africa next. Two, two yep. games in South Africa. Then it's Should win both. Two Should games both. in the... In the in the Challenge Cup, <laughs> yeah. but just a, just a, just a quick one on on Connacht. I thought with not too many changes, some of the, the likes of Hawkshaw, Blade, Porch, the guys who are playing for them week in week out, and that's something the Ospreys don't have. Take you know, Morgan Morris, Ruben Morgan Williams. Apart from those couple of guys, they seem that there's different combinations all the time. Where Connacht just have a little bit more consistency and. Um, yeah, Andy Friends, uh, Andy Friend, I think you know, targeted that game against the Ospreys, and even though the Ospreys got off their flying start, you know that they played some nice stuff in the opening ten or fifteen minutes, and I was like a little bit worried for for Connacht, but fair play to them. They got stuck back in. You know more more about the ten than I do. Rugby league background, Shanks. Yeah, Jack Walsh. I mean, he, he does look good in attack. I've watched him a couple of times. Um, probably didn't expect to play as much. Um, with Stephen Myler and Gareth Anscombe, but Anscombe's obviously been out since Glasgow. This guy's good, Kieran Williams. Not yeah. sure if he's going to make the step up to international rugby. Um, you won't know till you, I suppose you give him a, a chance, but he runs really hard, runs really good angles. He's strong. He's low centre of gravity. He's a difficult man to put down, and when you do, often he's able to get back up and, and keep going. But they lost... They, Stevie, to your point on the Ospreys, they, they lost a lot of players to Wales. Um, and I know the team like Edinburgh has, and they managed to gel quicker. Some teams are better at gelling than others. Um, but it doesn't help, you know, with new combinations coming in. And it's an important part for them to, to make sure they do step up. So, Kim Williams was good. Toby Booth, uh, looked, Toby Booth looked so pissed off. Like, he looked like... He looked like a man who's just fed up. Like, and I'm not sure if you talk about a fresh voice. Like he's been in, he's been in there a while. Like, you know, and they're not getting any better. Like uh, the rugby that they're playing for me. I know they're missing a lot of players, but as you go back, only one win from seven. So I'm so I'm sure he's feeling the pressure you now. Anscombe, mate. Honestly, like if you can get him fit for large period or long periods, he makes a massive difference. To the attack of the Ospreys, but you you will lose him. You lose him internationally, and he's also out injured, and he has been out injured. Last year he was back from a big injury, and it was only towards the end of the season I thought that he really started to hit form, and it was difficult for him to start because he gets chucked back in. Then he has to start against New Zealand. First thing he did was throw an intercept to Bowden Barron's hundredth cap, who goes under the post. So <laughs> it's been. It has been tough, but at the start of the season, I thought he looks good. He just gives him a different dimension in attack and he makes better decisions and he sees space that other tens don't, I think. And But you can't just pin your hopes on one player either. I get that. But yeah, look, there's there's a few Welsh coaches under pressure and they, they have been for a while, but who are you going to replace them with is my question. So unless there's someone better coming then you're Dean not Ryan's really going to do it. Do you know? Do you know? Right. Let's move on. Let's move on to the last of the Welsh games. Um, Dragons versus Zebra. Now, I cover that game. Um, and you know what? Like, they've turned a corner so far. I agree. I agree. So far. And I thought, I thought after the Munster game, we would have seen it sooner. But... We didn't because they had a couple of losses after that, um, Benetton and Cardiff. But since the Ospreys game where they won at home, they've looked different. I certainly agree with that. And the way they the way they went about playing Zebra was exactly what they needed to do. Because sometimes you might want to, if you get penalties, you might just want to go for the corner. You might want to go for the tries straight away. They didn't. They took all points that were available on offer. Sam Davis kicked those goals. They built a lead. And when you build a lead, you build points. And by the end, it was just way too much 
for Zebra. And this was a really good turnover by Aki Siuli and links really well. I thought this ball, I thought maybe that had to go, but he does, he dummies it. And Roger Williams, I thought it was really? Jared Ross at one stage. That's really good pace. He's it's one of those that he's made a decision already that he's going to cut in when he gets the ball. And they just they took their opportunities and Zebra weren't great um in attack. They weren't that great in defense, really. They fronted up. This was a little bit of moments of brilliance. Wainwright, some classy feet, and give Steph Hughes a nice pass over, who I think has been a bit of an unsung hero for them, even though he's been a fairly new sign-in. Just gives them another Scarlet's dimension. With them. Now, well, yeah. He was brilliant for the Scarlets last year. Not so much last year, but the year before. Just his attacking game, or being able to put the ball behind, his attacking kicks nearly all the tries the Scarlet scored when he was playing regularly, he would feature in that. So that's a telling sign. And he's looked good and looked a really good sign in for Dragons. Yeah, I look at, I mean, he was there. He was at Scarlet and I was there and I, I liked him a lot. He was behind Scott Williams. He was behind Jonathan Davis. He was behind Hadley Parks. But le obviously learned so much. And whenever he played, he played well. So I was quite surprised that they let him go. I know they've got you know, Johnny Williams there and Scott's still there and Fox is still there. Um, mm. But yeah, he, he, I think he just adds a different dimension. You're right. Yep. And I think it's nice to see Dragons win a game by that margin. Yeah, uh, it was. It's all, it's all relative. Like, they're getting better and they're not going to be at the top of the table, if we're honest. It's all it's all very relative. But if they can put in a, you know, make winning at home a regular occurrence, put some big scores, they're just like, I don't know. They just look like they're playing with a, a bit more confidence, and they don't look so miserable. Didn't see that last year. Like how good they were off set piece. Um, David Richards was man of the match. Um, first game for the Scarlets on the wing. Went off with an HIA. Scores this try in the corner. Ends up getting a, a knock on the head and has to go off and doesn't come back on. But look good, even from like even from his first touch. And he had one of these balls that's kicked to him. You're not sure whether to pick up. Just took his time. Stopped it with his foot. Picked it up ran it back but they're starting to look sharp off set piece as well you know they're starting to look like there's a few different options it's not just predictable it's not just like a jack dixon trucking it up yeah you know totally. they look like they've got a bit more shape to them now and and i'm pleased because I, you know, you know, what's, the, what's, the, what's the dragon for the last two or three years and you've been talking about oh they've got you know, really good wingers we we'll get the ball in the wide space and like I've watched Dragons games and the wingers have maybe touched the ball two or three times in 80 minutes over the last couple of years. And now they're getting involved every opportunity, pacing the mm. ball, half line breaks, getting in behind defence, scoring tries, setting up tries. Rio Dyer, man of the match last weekend, two weekends ago, whenever it was against Ospreys, now in the wheel squad. And it's just like. Another winger, man of the match on the weekend. Playing, playing with freedom and maybe. <laughs> Dean Ryan was just sucking that freedom out of them and they were, you know, it was it just wasn't a, a great atmosphere yeah. to be involved in. And now it smiles on faces. You win a couple of games and it just turns on its head. And and like I think it's great to see. Brilliant to see. Yeah. Brilliant for the league. Brilliant for Welsh rugby, considering they've been struggling of late. So yeah, long may I continue. Amen, brother. Um, now we'll go on to the Irish derby, Munster versus Ulster. Now you said last week, Stevie, oh, you fancied Ulster. It was wasn't a particular so did game. I. <laughs> no, you not as big, not as big as we thought it'd be. You know, fourteen, fifteen. Um, James Hume. Back in about action. It. Yeah, he's back in action. He's playing, he's starting this weekend for Ireland Day as well, which is captained by Craig Casey, who I thought might have been on the bench for Ireland this weekend. He's not going to be. Um, it's actually a half decent Ireland Day squad. I'm looking forward to seeing how they go. But yeah, I miss the A days. I miss the A days. Oh, did you boys did you boys grow up playing A's? Days. Yeah. Yes. Good days. Selling your match ticket so you could just drink in the pub. <laughs> yeah. extra quid. Great crack. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the whole weekend rugby and we'll talk about it briefly. But just on the Monster game, yeah. Ulster just went to the mall, kept it really tight, 
first half an hour, there was a Gale Force win behind them. Three tries. Nathan Doak missed three kicks at goal. Should have been 21-0. Well, in fairness, a couple of them were, were pretty tough. Should have been a, a little bit more anyway. And then Munster just got into the game, a little bit of a sniff. And the whole momentum shift just went with them. And Ulster just started making mistakes. I thought Frank Murphy, the referee, was diabolical. Um, just constantly making wrong decisions. I think what summed his performance up was in the 79th minute, 78th minute, it was at the far side. And one of the Munster players was literally holding an Ulster player down at the side of the, of the breakdown. And the Ulster player was like trying to get away. And he's like, had him pinned. And the ball couldn't get away. And Frank, oh, penalty advantage, not rolling away. And I was like, all right, Frank, I know you're born and raised in Munster, but, like, you're doing a good oh, job. Oh, oh, that you are, like, you know what I mean? So, see what you see. Like it's it. quiet by Ferris. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my rant of the week. How bad um, that referee okay. was in that game. It was driving me up the walls. Anyway, Ulster got the win. Munster showed a lot more promise with ball in hand. Oh. Fekatoa should have been red carded. I don't know what your, you guys think of, of the red card incident. <laughs> If you think it's a red, I'm going with you. I don't even have to see it. Ah, red. I thought it was a red, Stevie. Absolute stonewall red card. Like, this isn't what we're trying to stamp out of the game. He gets himself There's into no a different brilliant heights. position, nice and low, ready to explode, and he explodes 45 degrees up. But the height is that all the way. It's not like the player's gone from there to a low height. He's low anyway when he's running, so... There's for me. There's no mitigating circumstances there. He's low. He's low. Yeah. Red. He's hit. He hits he's him in the ground. He, he's probably six foot five. So we're affected him. Yeah. It's it's still probably six foot in the air. It's too high. Like mm. it's ridiculous, and that it drives me nuts. All oh, we've seen so many of them, and do you reckon he got the wrong card? I was talking. He thought oh, I'm gonna have to go with it. I just got to say, <laughs> yeah. No, he found mitigation. He found mitigation from somewhere. It sort of wasn't explained that much. He made a very quick decision on it. He's like, let me have a look at it. Okay. And then he made a very quick decision. And Connor Carhill, Cahill agrees. The question, the question that I would ask, lads, if that was a full strength Ulster team against a full strength monster team in a quarter final of a European Cup, that would have been a red card. Mm. And would have mm. decided the game. Would they have had a different ref though, wouldn't they? Maybe. Well, Frank um, Murphy's referee in the international week, uh, games this weekend. So well, months aren't going to be in a European quarterfinal, so it's fine. Don't worry. Um, right. <laughs> Let's Ooh, move on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. Right, John. In my running order that I've got on the screen, right there, um, there is no chat about Glasgow Benetton. Um, yeah, but feel like we have to talk about it so we don't you don't feel left out i'm talking about the referee again if you, you know what i've said uh yeah you're talking about stevie uh i've said i've said double ed double scottish wins every weekend and finally it's happened so yeah it instead of the first game it has to, it has to be a double win it can only be a double win is uh it was robert i spent my life looking through your quotes trying to put it back on the groups <laughs> oh, i'll be, be in there um I mean, 37 nil. it sounds like Glasgow were unbelievable, but Benetton was just dire. You know, a couple more tries. There was just nothing really happened in the game. It was quite a stop-start game, and you know, <laughs> the first try was the big number eight, Vailanu, and he's oh, running. Oh, what about the winger? The dummy, the tens bought the dummy a good 20 yards before he's throwing it. He's like, I am not, I'm not tackling this thing, and don't really blame him, but yeah, that was probably the highlight. The game never really got going, but Glasgow another bonus point win at home. They'll be happy with that. They love, they love a they love a home win. Those they boys. love a home win, but we still don't know quite what they're up to away. And it's actually interesting to speak to Frank Smith after the game, and he says, you know, they're just that they're aware of it. They're trying to figure out that they're still evolving, and he he understands that home home form is not quite enough. So it's good to good to speak to him and hear him admit that. And whilst we're all saying it, they're they're trying to fix that problem. Maximum points in a, in a dire game, but good to see. The Bull Sharks. Um, cool. Now, this... I was wondering when this game was going to open up because nothing really happened in the first 35 minutes until could see a try. A uh, really nice line from Jesse Creel. Just 
like a just hides his himself really um but it did pick up and i really enjoyed the game i don't know what you boys thought i've, I've watched i watched most of the highlights i've seen this it's papier just going in um but it was an open game it was a fast game i thought the balls looked really good um and they just they end up pulling away towards the, the second half look at this ball here it's the worst ball I've ever seen that ends up being a try. <laughs> <laughs> looks forward. It looks forward, but I don't think he meant to give it. Like, if, if he gives that as a normal pass, they're not scoring that try. But he ends up giving such a bad pass, fumbles it in the air, throws a defender, and goes over to win it. But it was, it ended up being a real good game, quite high scoring as well um, 40 points probably, to 27. Silence for the Bills. A couple of big signings could see a sign on for another four years, and then they've signed that huge tight head from Harlequins. Is it low? The big, yeah. massive tight head. So, yeah. like, they're building, getting stronger and stronger every year. So, they're going to be a force, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know that anyway, don't we? Really. Um, if we go on to the Lions Stormers, a um, lot of penalties kept the Lions in the game. Um, David's from. The storm is a real strong finish on the right wing, just barrels over a player from about a meter out, just rocks him back and dives over the top of him. Um, Bloom and Cheese hits a brilliant angle, you know, like the angle. Bloom like and Cheese, <laughs> what, what, what do you say? Did you say Bloom and Cheese? No, <laughs> what, did you, what did you say? Scrap, what did you say? What did you say? Anyway, it's a great angle from, from out to in, and uh, and it was like a like a, a center hits the angle, but he's obviously fifteen, um, and just picking up two players who are looking at the ruck, don't see him from coming from out to in, uh, and it's a classy try. Um, Van Wick, Van Wick uh, from the Lions, another strong performance. His try is really good, like proper strength. Gets down on the floor, manages to get back up and power himself over. I'm really impressed with him. I have been anyway, last few weeks. And that's it. That is the roundup of BKT URC round seven or six for some people because they've had a stomach bug. Which brings us on to rants of the week. Stevie. Man. Okay. Reps. Like I, I actually I actually think like Frank Murphy is just everybody has a bad day, but I thought that was a really bad day. And then is it Craig Evans? Was it Craig Evans, the Welsh yeah. referee? He's a referee. And, like I, I just referees should walk out before they walk out of the tunnel and go, okay, the weather's miserable, it's really bad. I'm going to be a wee bit more lenient when it comes to line out throw on or around the breakdown. Give them an extra second. Okay, all the internationals are away. It's not the same caliber. It might not be as quick and as you, know, I, I, you can't referee a game the same way. So you can't referee Benetton versus Glasgow the same way you're refereeing New Zealand versus Ireland. Like yeah. it's just, it's just like it cracks me up and it's so inconsistent. Like. One of the Benetton players was lying at the side of the rock, trying his absolute best to tight head prop, tight, trying his absolute best to get out of the way. The ball was sitting there, and there just as the, the scrum half was about to pick it up, he's like, penalty advantage, not rolling away quick enough. It's just like, let the bloody game flow, man. So mm. that's the rant. John? Yeah, yeah my, I don't want to hammer the refs too much, and it's more the inconsistencies in interpretations i know it's not and you see your point steve is that there has to be a a bit of feel for a game uh in the surroundings yeah, and the teams yeah, and the right. conditions but we saw bundiaki get banned for eight weeks for his mm. act on sanatla then you see brody retallick get banned for two mm. for exactly the same exactly, exactly the same i thought and then because he does a i don't know coaching awareness score something like a speeding ticket you know it's ridiculous and then you see glenn, glenn young for scott on the weekend similar kind of incident and there seems to be little empathy for what players can do and then the outcomes are so different in the game and they're, and they're changing games or they will and i just think at some point it's going to happen in a 
World Cup final or a and you just feel I just feel sorry for the ref. Granted, you're gonna have the best refs refereeing those games, you would hope, but just need to figure this out before it's, it's just a carry on. We're talking about it every single week. That's my rant. Yeah. You you shanks, you got one? Um, yeah, that's the biggest one. Um <laughs> and also don't do a player walk interview and then mm. let another pundit walk in and make it real awkward, basically. Yeah. I was don't walk us in the middle of just you know when you got production stuff. Don't walk us in the middle of the pitch for the opening scene as well. I know it's great, but my eyes were everywhere looking for balls. I just especially because you were there as well, JB, and I know how disliked you are in Scottish rugby. <laughs> I just thought we've got, I was just looking for I was looking to get peppered by balls the whole time. I was on edge, but it yeah, made great TV. Good. All right, Gavin great TV. Got right. for this week. Uh, presenter's choice. That's where I get to choose. Um, leave this. Leave this on for a bit so I can read them. Greatest movie of all time. Least favorite away ground. Favorite sport in urban. Mm, greatest movie of all time. Easy. Jeez. You'll you'll have something like one flew over the cuckoo's nest or something. That's what you like. So, Fiddler's <laughs> list, <laughs> so, something bizarre <laughs> like that. No, uh, my favorite movie, and based on the criteria is that if it's on, I will watch it every single time. Is Wolf of Wall Street? Mm. If based on that, mine would be Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. <laughs> just love watching it. I wouldn't say <laughs> no blades, no bows, leave weapons here. Um, but I also really like Gladiator and I really like Last of the Mohicans. Oh, mm. everyone says Shawshank Redemption, don't they? And it's just that's a good twist. It's a bit boring, though. Good movie, but boring answer. Oh. Mm. Stevie, um, uh, this, this is a little bit. This is a little commitments. bit. The commitments. <laughs> uh, total Recall. I don't even know. If I've seen you that. like that scene, do you, with the woman? <laughs> hey, I need three hands. <laughs> <laughs> total Recall. Wow. Total it wouldn't, recall. Even my, it wouldn't even be in my top three Arnie films. <laughs> Come on. Oh, yeah, thought, Quaid. It makes sense now. It was going to be an Arnie movie, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's like so it. good. Have you never seen it, John? I've not seen it. Have no. you never seen it? No. He's probably what? seen the new one. He's probably seen the. Isn't there a new one as well with someone else? Have you seen the Running Man? Oh, that's yeah. the Running Man. I'm thinking of. Have you seen that's the Running Man? No. In John. my bun. No, you haven't seen it. <laughs> you need to uh, you miss, school miss, yourself like, on Arnie films. Have you seen have you seen Kindergarten Cop? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's play a game. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's a two That's presenter's choice then. Standout games this weekend. We will start with who should we start with? Ireland versus South Africa. I'm really Massively looking yeah, forward to that. Big well, the South Africans have named their team Brighton. Really? Right? Clip yeah. right? Six two split on mm. the bench. Um, Dion Faree's a bit of a surprise on the bench. Didn't expect to see him there. 30, 40, 50, or whatever he is. He, he's getting Colby at 15. Yeah, Colby at 15. Like everybody's going to me, oh, Colby at 15. He's only five foot eight or nine. Like he is. He's incredible under the high ball. I think right. he's really good under the high ball. Martinez, um, full back for Man U. <laughs> What's the weather doing this he weekend in, in Dublin? Steve? It's, it's supposed to be okay. It's supposed to be all right. It's supposed to be a little bit stormy yeah. in the morning, and then as the as the day goes on, Ireland are favourites for the bookies, three or four points in the in, in, in that. But it's the question we always ask: Can Ireland do it against the big, strong, physical teams like when England were? fully loaded with a few of their brutes over the last couple of years. Ireland have struggled a little bit. It's the same with South Africa. Like, Ireland haven't played South Africa for five years. Mm. Like, that's a pretty long time. So it's going to be a great game. First in the world versus third in the world. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Like, guys like Malcolm Marks, Etzebeth, 
Luke Dieger, Peter Steph the Toy, Star Studded, mate. Both teams. Oh, like just um, sheer um, power. But and then you hear out of the Irish team that you know that they're probably going to go with Tag Furlong at tight end, and they're going to go with Gibson Park lads who have had hardly any game time this season. Like I don't mm-hmm. think Gibson Park's actually played at all. So um, yeah, it's I still think Ireland that if the weather's okay, JB, I think the style of rugby that they play, they can move South Africa about and and win this match. But it's going to be a builder. John, it's not on my list, but uh, Scotland Fiji, Scotland bounce yeah. back. I saw that. Who wrote, who wrote the running order? A bit disrespectful, isn't it? A little yeah. bit. You've missed out Glasgow yeah. and this. Anyway. Yeah, a bit of a theme emerging here. Mm. Um, Scotland have to win and win well. Vern Carter's okay. return. I love these Murrayfield. Yes, yeah, good. Yeah, write that one down. Um, yeah. Scotland needs to win, win well. Win a lot. Win very win. well. Okay. Um, then we've got France, Australia. I think, France. judging by the game on the weekend from Scotland, Australia, I think France won't have too many difficulties putting them away. France by 20. I think it wow. could be a big score. 20. Yeah, yeah, I thought I was. I thought I mean it was a poor game. I thought Australia just looked a bit clueless. And I, mate, their their attack looked. But like mate, look at their defense. Miles off. Their stats before the game. I didn't. I know they they ship points, but there's. I think it's every just about every game in the last six they've conceded almost forty points or more. France, France with their attack will score hundreds of points yeah. against them. So. Mm. Yeah, France. Uh, England, England, Argentina. I think it'll be. A, Another good game. I think Argentina, over the last three or four years, has seen massive improvement. Certainly, like big wins against New Zealand, South Africa, right. Australia. Yeah. Chance so, when it comes to it comes to the autumn internationals, they seem to. I don't know. It's it's like they're on holiday. You know, it's, I know they're are they nothing games. Of course, no international games are nothing game, but there's nothing really on the line, and like. Ireland played them last November, absolutely taunted them, and they just couldn't be asked. They were, you know, already on their way back. Players were already on their way back to the top fourteen or back to the Premiership or wherever. So I'm interested but to see how they go. Could they be a different team now? You know, when you think not too long ago they beat the All Blacks, which is no easy task. I should bloody know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> played against them like eight times. <laughs> Lost them by one point once. Lost them by one point once, and we're still celebrating that now. Uh, which brings me on to Wales versus New Zealand. Um, I'll ask you boys: Do Wales have a chance? Are New yeah. Zealand there for the taking? Are they overrated? Yeah, Wales, Wales have underperforming. A chance. Depends who they pick at ten. I think at the moment, if they go with Gav Anscombe, he wouldn't have played in five weeks. Um, which is quite a big ask going against one of the best teams in the world. They're not ranked number one, so we can't say that anymore. But that's a little bit of a worry. Or do they go with Reese Priestland at 10? But then, you know, when you, the different types of players, I think Reese Priestland is quite safe bet. You know, game management is really good. Kicking is really good. Gav Anscombe's naturally more attacking, he's got more pace. Um, is Lee Halfpenny going to be fit because he pulled out the Scarlets game? There's talk of Toby Fallatow not playing, which might mean Justin Tipperick has to play eight, and then maybe Tommy Raphael and Chris Tashunza start. I think the front five will, will be pretty strong. Um, Thomas Williams will be nine. Lewis Rezamit is going to win man of the match because I'm doing comms and I'm picking it. Um, and he's on, he's on, he's on amazing form. Um, but there is an option to move him to 15, maybe. Is Josh Adams going to be fit? Because he's got a dodgy thumb and he hasn't played last week. So there's a lot of what ifs and who's fit and who's not fit. So slightly, slightly worried um, amongst the backs more so. And I think if you do stand a chance in beating a team like New Zealand, you need your full hit out. But then anything can happen. Red cards happen quite often now. It doesn't take much to, to get a red. We saw it from Brody Retallick. And if you get a little bit of luck like that, Maybe two reds to New Zealand, then Wales will be all right. <laughs> there we go. I don't. I I think New Zealand will be too strong. I think so. Wales. 
I think so. I think it'll be close. There we are. It, but it's going to be a great game anyway. This, it is going to be a good game. You know, they're they're statistically the best team in the world over the last sort of fifty years. So um, you'll be there. Thanks. Nice you'll be there. Do some hospitality. I'll be there. Yeah, you know me in the locker room. Right, that is it, lads. That is it. Um, we're due a break now. We'll come back on when we have the next rounds of fixtures. Enjoy Wednesdays off, both of you and uh we'll see you soon don't forget subscribe watch enjoy on via play goodbye